Hi, welcome back to the Kumbaya podcast. I am so excited to have you here with me today. This is going to be a short, quick episode, and I just wanted to talk about prevention. Okay. If anyone says that health, um, you know, disease, negative things that could happen to you is with regards to your health can't be prevented, I want you to run in the opposite direction. Um, I recently went to a provider and that person proceeded to tell me that you can't prevent things. It's just going to break if it's going to break. You you really can't do anything about it. So just wait until the time comes to go on medicine and then we'll we'll deal with it. And it just blew my mind. So I got to thinking, wow, if someone would go to this provider and not know that that's not true, they would take that statement as fact and then they would not change any modifiable factors. And so I just, I had to come on. I had to tell you guys today that that's not true. Okay. That we can prevent so many things now when it comes to our health. Um, as far as pelvic physical therapy, what I see is preventing pelvic floor dysfunction, preventing prolapse, um, helping ourselves have smoother labors, smoother and shorter labors in childbirth experiences, um, preventing painful sex, preventing, there's just so many things that really can be prevented if you just know about the health of your pelvic floor. So think of going to the dentist. We go to the dentist in order to prevent cavities. We don't wait till our mouth is all in pain and, and infected and inflamed and just um, a crazy mess. We go every six months to prevent things. And now we know that even chronic diseases that we thought really couldn't be prevented or really couldn't be addressed in this, it, like we know now, like diabetes, um, breast cancer, there's so many things that even if you have a familial history of it, that means you're like hip um, degeneration, right? So you can say, my dad has a bad hip, my dad's dad has a bad hip, I got three aunts, you know, and an uncle that have a bad hip, it's in my genes, oh, it was me, I have a bad, I'm going to have a bad hip. We know now that that does not have to be your reality, that Something is called, um, there's a new study that's come out, it's called epigenetics, EPI genetics, right? And so look it up, educate yourselves. Basically, we know that we have all these genes that control things, but even if you have the gene for breast cancer or the gene for this or that, by our actions, by our what we call modifiable factors, that's your diet, whether you smoke or not, how much fresh water you drink, if you're drinking sodas only or all the time, um, if you're getting good sleep, if you are um, breathing fresh air, you're getting outside enough that you know, you're know you in a stressful environment all the time, or if your nervous system is nice and balanced, um, these things either um, facilitate the expression of those genes or not. And so what epigenetics is, is the study of switches. And so we know even though we have thousands of genes, we've got like millions of switches that control the genes and our actions by what we eat, by how we take care of ourselves in the day to day dictates if those switches get turned on or turned off. And what's super, super important is that when you are pregnant, especially if you have a female baby, a little baby girl inside, she has all the eggs that she's going to have for her life. They're developing when she's in your womb. So you actually have not only your daughter, but your granddaughter and your grand, you know, your granddaughter's kids genes already kind of forming her, you know, her half of them, you know, inside your womb when you're growing your baby. It's just mind blowing, right? So what we know now is that by um, the pregnant mom eating well, then that will turn off the genes for the baby inside. And that will help depress or decrease the expression of these negative genes that we don't want expressed. So all that to say that you can prevent things. You can prevent so much by the choices that we make. And let's review those choices. Sleeping well, um, drinking fresh water, and mostly water, really anything besides water is not that super great. Um, uh, not smoking, not doing drugs, not drinking a whole lot as far as alcohol, 
um, maintaining your, your stress level low and being um, around people that you love, having a community, being engaged, having a purpose, all these things are, are nurturing to our soul, nurturing to our body, and so important for our health. And if someone tells you that you cannot prevent diabetes or you cannot prevent thyroid dysfunction or whatever, you know, cavities, I mean, you absolutely can. And I want to empower you to look up epigenetics and let me know if you have any other questions. And I hope that this empowers you to do something new today. If there's one healthy change that you can make, and I usually typically say, don't take things away. Don't stop eating donuts, add something in, drink a couple extra glasses of water, add in a salad, add in something else healthy before you start taking things away. Usually when you add healthy things in and you don't deprive yourself and start with the elimination of things, it's a lot easier to stick with change and to make more positive change. So to your good health and mine and all of ours collectively, we've got this. Take care. Do you ever wish that you could learn the essentials of pelvic health from an experienced pelvic floor physical therapist at a fraction of the cost and from the comfort of your own home? This episode is sponsored by Progressive Pelvic Education, your source for online courses to expand your pelvic health knowledge and promote optimal wellness. Pelvic health is wealth, and there is a lot of essential information about our pelvic floor that isn't taught in school. Learn what to do and not to do to avoid the inconvenience and pain of pelvic floor issues in a self-paced course you can take anywhere. Visit progressivepelviceducation.com to get access today.